You all have been using poison the wrong way. Most people have written off poison bills as something almost completely useless and unconventional, and I'm here to tell you why that's fucking wrong and how I plan to revolutionize the meta of Elden Ring with my mathematically correct poison build. You can make any adjustments you'd like to better fit your playstyle, but copying my way is the most efficient way to get the most damage. I've been trying my best to stay consistent with making videos on top of juggling schoolwork, so when you guys leave a like, it really helps me stay motivated to pump these kind of videos out for you guys. And as soon as this video is uploaded, I should be live streaming invasions utilizing the very build you're about to watch. And with that out of the way, let's get one thing straight. Poison sucks. No, really, as an affinity, it has always been extremely underwhelming. Except for Dark Souls 2. I actually remember it not being shit in that game. I don't know if that's just me. But for the most part, why would I ever use poison when something like Scarlet Rot exists? Well, for starters, most Scarlet Rot weapons suck, but we'll come back to that later. Poison, on the other hand, is very common, but takes too long to build up on an enemy because most just won't stand there and let you hit them. And even if you did stack it up fast enough, its damage is laughable, and it feels like it's never worth the setup it takes over other affinities such as Bleed, Frostbite, Madness. Hell, even Sleep provides more utility than Poison, and that's saying a lot considering how dog shit Sleep is. Some people have already caught on to the nifty little setup with the combination of two key items, the Mushroom Crown and the Kindred of Rot Talisman. For those who don't know, the Hat provides a 10% damage increase, and the Talisman provides a 20% damage increase, and both of these stack multiplicatively with each other, to offer roughly 32% damage increase for 30 seconds total whenever something suffers from Poison or Scarlet Rot nearby. After after extensive testing, it's just not efficient to use it this way. You're telling me I have to constantly attack something or dump a dickload of points into arcane just to get a fast buildup of poison? And even once it's applied, it deals minuscule damage and my damage buff only lasts for 30 seconds after this happens? So if I end up poisoning someone in a situation where I'm forced to back off after, I've ultimately wasted my window of opportunity to maximize the damage buff. Or most times in PvP, you'll actually kill your target before you can fully build up the poison or scarlet rot anyways. And it's not like you can ever even see the meter itself, you kinda just have to keep track of how many times you've hit someone, and then eventually the buff effect activates to let you know that they're finally poisoned. Applying poison deals about 8 damage every single second once it's applied, and the damage buff activates as long as something suffers from poison or scarlet rot within a certain radius of the player. But this also includes the player getting poisoned themselves. Just standing in a poison swamp or lake of rot type area can trigger the damage buff to activate even if no one else is around. So I started thinking to myself, if only there was a reasonably efficient way to poison myself constantly and utilize the damage buff at my convenience rather than the inconvenience of smacking the shit out of something until it pops. And yes, by now you're probably catching on and thinking, well duh, Syrobe, those raw meat dumplings exist. They poison you and heal you for a lot, so it would be best to use those. But unfortunately, to both your dismay and my own, these little meatballs are a rare commodity within the world of Elden Ring, considering you can only find a total of around 20 per playthrough naturally, with an added burden of being an extremely low drop rate from defeating living jars. They also can't be gained without cheating because they can't be traded and aren't craftable either. Either. Don't get me wrong, this item is amazing, but as a non-renewable resource, I just wish there was a way to craft something like this shit. Or is there? Shit. A common term synonymous with excrement, gold-tinged excrement, a key material used for crafting items such as the fetid pot consumables, both roped and regular. Upon further inspection, these items build up poison when thrown at an enemy, just like any other poison items. But what makes the fetid pot unique is that even if you don't hit anything, it builds up poison within the player itself to around 60% after just one use. Meaning that at the very most it takes a total of two fetid pots to completely poison yourself, which leaves the activation of both the Mushroom Crown and Kindred of Rot Talisman damage buff passives directly into the hands of the player as they are easily craftable. It only requires two materials. Mushrooms, which are all over and easy to find, but this location in Limgrave at the Artist Shack's Grace allows you to efficiently farm gold-tinged excrement infinitely just by refreshing the area. Okay, I'm spending way too long talking about digital shit piles. Anyways, with my build, before you want to engage in combat, chucking two pots will give you a 32% damage buff for 30 seconds, and is the most efficient way to utilize these damage buffs because now you'll have full control over when it activates and the ability to easily refresh it once it expires, because there is no cooldown on the damage buff. It can instantly be reapplied once it's done. To further increase efficiency, you can craft the rope fetid pot variants that are primarily used to throw behind the player, similar to a banana for Mario Kart. But we can instead use these if we're in a pinch as they allow us to fully build up poison as fast as possible because they are faster to use than regular pot versions. Also, the only annoying part is finding a lot of string, which is only required for the rope version. So if you guys know any efficient way to farm more string, please leave a comment down below to help each other out. With this, I've finally figured out a way to make poison meta, and this works with any build for juicy damage increase. It's just funny that the best way to use poison is actually on yourself and not your enemies. Just make sure to keep some Shrek Balls on you to quickly remove the self-inflicted poison and you're good to go. It's also important to note that removing the poison from yourself still keeps the damage buff active. So instantly applying and then getting rid of the poison gives an indefinite 32% damage increase whenever you poison yourself.
That's quite big. Speaking of poisons, going back to the topic of Scarlet Rot, everyone is aware of Scarlet Rot, or at least the potential of what Scarlet Rot could have been, because there are very few and limited items that can apply Scarlet Rot to your enemies, and you're all probably thinking I'm going to talk about the Ansper Rapier, or the Scarlet Rot Dragon Breath, of which there are millions of videos on already, but no. There are a select few weapons that directly build up Scarlet Rot besides these two. However, all of these items you see on screen are pretty underwhelming, as they all have one major issue in common, which is that they all lack range. The weapons that can apply Scarlet Rot tend to have extremely short range and most of them can't have their Ash of War changed either on top of the fact that they do very little poise damage or they're just too sluggish and overall disappointing. Most of you are now probably wondering why something like melee range or poise damage matters and that's because in PvP it's something that catches a lot of people off guard. As you can see here I have almost 80 rune arcs that I farm just by killing dozens of hosts and their summons because not only am I pretty good at PvP but also because spears are super fucking good especially when it comes to roll catching and winning melee trades. Unlike most other long range melee weapons that are super telegraphed and easy to avoid or react to, spears are exceptional at both damage and range, as well as being pretty fast and hard to react to when used properly. But one of the most important items I intentionally left out is specifically the Rotten Crystal Spear that is actually super fucking solid as a dex weapon, which also deals a bit of magic damage on top of applying additional Scarlet Rot buildup. It's a very fun weapon and a personal favorite of mine that I'm glad I can share with you guys because it's flown under the radar as it's not super OP or flashy to the point that not many people even know this weapon exists. However, it's also sort of hard to get as you have to farm them from this location in Halig Tree. It took me around 12 minutes of killing these Crystallians with the spears, but I got really fucking lucky on stream because I actually got two drops in a single run with about 150 discovery, and I wasn't even utilizing items that boost your item discovery. <gasps> like seriously, it was hype as fuck. No way I just did that! But the best part of this weapon is that it actually scales pretty well with dex as it gets a B tier scaling with dex at its plus 10 max out level. Just ignore the in scaling as well because it's pretty awful and not worth investing into. Now, because we're in Elden Ring, power stancing is a mechanic that allows the player to gain a unique moveset with two items of identical types. These do not need to be weapons that are the exact same copies of one another, just the same type will do. For example, having two of these Rotten Crystal Spears is honestly not a good idea, because it can't have any other Ash of War on it besides the default, so two of them kinda fucking sucks. However, the Cross Naginata is also classified within the same category as Spears, and it's one of the best, if not the best, Spear in the game, as it also gains a B scaling in Dex that goes even higher into an A scaling with the Keen Affinity applied to it. And because the Cross Naginata is not a special weapon, we can apply something like Bloodhound Step to get that Keen Affinity for increased Dex scaling and also utilize Rot Grease to give it an insane amount of of Scarlet Rot buildup as well. It's also nice that the Rotten Crystal Spear will always have Scarlet Rot applied to it, so you don't have to worry about constantly refreshing both of the Scarlet Rot buffs on each weapon and just focus on the Cross Naginata. Applying the Rot Grease to the Cross Naginata will allow you to fully apply Scarlet Rot in only 3-4 to four Power Stance attacks. It also helps to save resources and is less time consuming and the best way to make this build work. This allows each of our spears to do a minimum of almost 550 damage each and when we use our L1 attack, the Power Stance will hit both spears at the same time so we can hit for almost 1,000 damage with just this, but we're not done yet. Because of the spear and the rock grease, it builds up Scarlet Rot super fast once again as an added bonus. It's super effective at burning through healing items of enemies, and especially those that wear heavy armor because most players start to panic when they get Scarlet Rot and can't remove it. One major thing I've noticed is that if you invade an area that doesn't naturally have Scarlet Rot like the capital of Lindale, almost no one has anti-Scarlet Rot items or spells like Flame Cleanse Me because they don't expect it to be there, as opposed to invading somewhere like Caleb. But don't forget, with the self-poison buff, we are now in control of an extra 32% damage increase, totaling over 1,400 total damage, again, while still having an insanely fast buildup of Scarlet Rot. It's such a fucking good build without any gimmicks and is just mathematically correct. So here are my stats and the build that I use for all my invasions. All of my gear, including my armor, which by the way, the mushroom hat is fucking OP. It gives 9 poise and a bunch of resistances on top of the passive damage buff, so you can now be the Shrigma male of your wildest dreams. I use the Beast Champion chest armor with both Veteran Gauntlets and Veteran Greaves, which puts me at 67 total poise, which is enough poise to take on mostly all light or one-handed attacks without being interrupted. Most people don't realize that poise is more important than actual defense because as you can see here, I almost always out-trade everyone with this high amount of poise because their attacks get interrupted more often compared to my own. This poise allows me to land my Power Stance attacks easily and roll catch them to finish the job. I also keep the Albinaric pots on me because they are super clutch for punishing people who sip their flasks as you don't even need to get a direct hit. Just throwing it close enough will render an enemy unable to use either the Crimson Flask or the Cerulean Flask as they legit cannot use either once it's applied. And it's so funny because almost no one uses this so no one knows what the fuck is happening and it just looks like I busted a fucking nut on them. However, it should be noted that you can still use any other method of healing such as spells or the Physics Flask healing and the Albinarics only disable the default HP or Mana Flask for 30 seconds. It's super fun to use so now I'll leave you guys 
guys with a bunch of clips of me using this in PvP, and if you enjoyed the video or found the information helpful, please drop a fat fucking like and a massive sub once again, as I do everything myself, and I appreciate the support. Oh, he's got flame cleanse me. Got him. Woo! We won that trade. He's still rotted. That wasn't flame cleanse me. That was flame grant me strength. Oh, let the rocket him. Let the rocket him. Let the rocket him. Let the rocket him. <laughs> oh my god, dude. You wish you could drink this right now. Look at this. Mother Bloodhound steppers. Doesn't know what it does. Gotta, gotta set up a little bit more. Whoa! Careful, you might hurt someone with that. I mean, though. You, uh, not out of mana yet? There we go. Interesting. 1v3! I just kept getting stun locked. He, they attack faster than me. I have to use my range more. How are you guys today? I hit one of these. Unfortunately, you're not going to hit that. It was a good attempt. Ooh. Come on. Come on. No. Ow. That kind of hurts. Interesting. Interesting turn of events. I'm going to separate the two just by hiding here. I gotta split them up. Gotta keep keep the distance. Ooh. Oh, I hit him. Nice. Almost fucking died to that, bro. Are you kidding me? Ah, 
Ah, nothing I could do. They're just spamming spells. One has Moon Veil, so I can't get close. The other one has fucking Lightning, so I can't be ranged. I can't split them up, and they're just teabagging because they're losers. Are we running to the boss? Rick! Oh, he's hiding. Wait, these are the same people. Nice. Hi. Hi, bud. Hey, my boy. My boy. Dude, these are the same people. Okay, they have to... Like, okay, so now I don't feel bad. If you see me teabag them, it's because these are the exact same people. They're just like baiting invasions. They're ganking is what it's called. They're trying to be invaded and then they're just 2v1ing people. Can I land this? I don't have any more. Lucky. Yeah. Yeah, get shit on. Little gankers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch me teabag. Watch me teabag your friend. Yeah, now you're next. Hey, you're next. You're next. Where are you going, bud? Thought you were cool because you were fucking... Yeah, yeah. Went down again. Little gankers. They ganked me and then started teabagging because they killed me. And now I've killed them twice in a row. Cleaning up the streets, dude. I'm like Batman. Except I'm covered in shit. Connection error? The same people. Is it Rick? It is Rick. It's the same people. It's the gankers. I've killed them twice. So I don't, I don't understand the point of them still doing this. He's getting shit on. Nice. <laughs> Alright, do you see how bad they are? Like, they're gankers, but they can't even do that right. Alright, hold on. Hold on, bud. Let's calm down. Let's, uh... Let's know our fucking place, yeah? <laughs> they're already gankers, man. <laughs> we kill the gankers a third time in a row. Stop ganking, man. Hey. Die of the rot. Okay. I don't know what that was. I guess that was like an ego thing. Oh, you're gonna die to Scarlet Rot now. Hold up. Go kill that guy. Oh. Goodbye. Oh, you can't heal! Oh, you can't heal! Oh, that kind of sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> that was actually so clutch to the Alvin Arc bot, dude. That's another good example. He couldn't heal. Oh, shit. Yo, what's up? Whoa. Oh, we got him. Did we get him? I think we got him. Okay, we got him. Nice. That was clutch. Holy shit. 
What's up, bud? Where are we going? Why are you running? He's still up there. What the fuck? Wait, did he climb up the ladder? Come on, I know you're waiting. Ooh, Scarlet Rotted. Oh, it doesn't work! Ah ha ha. Did he, bro, he alt that forward. Nah, dude, wait, I think I had him. He fucking alt that forward. <laughs> he couldn't heal and he alt that forward, dude. No way, man. Oh, this build makes people rage quit, dude. There's no way.